We are hot. We got our mics hot now. Nice. Hey, for the first time in a while, I'm not the reason why we're late today. Yeah, no, man. I had to... <laughs> Mike came in and was like getting the 20 questions, man. I got here. I got here on time. Getting the 20 questions from Homeland Security, bro. I have work stuff. I was doing some work stuff. Morning, Sam Salinas. How's it going? We're going to get into the discussion off the bat. Is Aaron Rodgers washed, man? How would I tell you? Right when the game started, I texted you yesterday. And I told you, Aaron Rodgers' ass cheeks, man. <laughs> hey, what's up, Sam? Thanks for listening, man, yeah, while you're good working, morning, bro. Everybody. Tim Gonzalez, what's good, Micah Joe? What's good, Tim? Chris Gonzalez, ripped to the best of all time. James Earl Jones, man. Pour some out. Sean Quintero. Good morning, Sean. <laughs> Tony Ornales speaking Spanish. Quiero escuchar charlas sobre deportes. Good morning, Midtown Tex. Ah, Aaron Rodgers, he says more overrated like you. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Join the discussion as we broadcast live from beautiful West San Antonio. And remember to tip your hosts as it helps the show grow. What's going on, San Antonio? What's going on, South Texas? This is the Alamo City Sportscast coming at you from the west side of San Antonio. My name's Mike Jimenez. That's Joe Garcia. It is Tuesday here in San Antonio. Week one of the NFL season in the books. We had a Monday night football game last night between the Niners and the Jets. Niners got the win. No Christian McCaffrey, no problem. Big question for the day. <laughs> and I know that Joe likes this question. Yes, sir. Is Aaron Rodgers washed? He is, man. <laughs> We're going to get into that. Uh, about uh, the Niners as well, because uh, one of their star players from yesterday, a guy named Jordan Mason, who came out of nowhere, rushed for 147 yards, might have gotten the team in trouble for what he said immediately after the game. What a dumbass. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, the NFL power rankings have been released, and I believe my New Orleans Saints got dissed repeatedly when it came to that. <laughs> oh, they did get dissed, Mike. Who did they beat? Dude, who did the Cowboys beat? Hey, man, the Cowboys so, beat a good team. Yeah, right, dude. <laughs> We're going to look at that Tyreek Hill body cam footage. And the reaction oh, to it all no. should I mean Robert Griffin the third coming out and saying that uh, it was you know brutality and it was over aggression and others are coming out and saying dude just take the L man bad take bad take we'll get into that right did the cops do something wrong I am somebody who thinks that a lot of cops are jerks man yeah right and I and I know the whole George Floyd incident from a few years ago I understand the sensitivity towards that and it's warranted because there's a lot of bad apples out there a higher percentage than what people want to give credit for but Tyreek Hill was he to blame or the cops to blame for that whole situation we're actually going to look at that video later on we're going to also take a look at the uh, life and legacy of James Earl the Jones, great James Earl Jones who yeah. died at the age of 93 now Tony Arnalis <laughs> reaching out to us early in the show he was like dude I'm scared you guys started late. I thought there was going to be no show. Tony, we're here, baby. And for once, we were not late because of me. We were late because of Joe. Joe had a work issue. Is. No, I had to answer some questions and stuff and get some things lined up for work. So yeah. I was busy. Now, later, Tony was asking about my daughter. My daughter is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, she works for the advocate over there. Um, here's the thing. Uh, my daughter is in the... Is, 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 Potentially in the eye of the hurricane that's going to come on. Hurricane Francine, which is weird. Off the coast of Brownsville, Texas right now, it looks as though it should be coming towards Texas, but it's actually going to go north and to the east and hit Louisiana. My daughter's going to be spending the night 
at the uh, newspaper. She was a newspaper reporter. Uh, she's going to be spending the night at the station or at the uh, the newspaper offices because of the storm coming in and the floods and all the things that are going to come their way. Uh, so keep your prayers up for the state of Louisiana as Francine makes its way on shore tomorrow. Uh, already the rain's already coming on in. But let's get into sports. man. We do sports, we do pop culture, nostalgia. The big thing about this podcast is the fact that between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., San Antonio goes dark when it comes to local radio, when it comes to local sports talk. Yeah, it does. Ticket 760, San Antonio Sports Star, they go national. You can be listening to the Jim Rome Show right now, or you could be listening to a podcast that's going to talk about what you want to talk about, whether it be UTSA football, whether it be local boxing, local wrestling, whether it be uh, anything from Texas State, man. They beat up on UTSA this past weekend. We talk about things like the Cowboys and the Texans, a lot of local and state-oriented sports, high school football. This Friday, we're going to have Johnny Walker again from the Texas Longhorns. Back in the day, Johnny Walker going to come in and give a preview of upcoming UT games. Yeah, and Exciting we also, times. I recorded a segment early this morning with my boy, uh, B. Damone from Along the Wire. Mm -hmm. He's going to give us the skinny on what's going to be happening here. What we should be looking for when it comes to high school football. Yeah, that's great, man. I mean, high school football got off and running a couple of weeks ago. Now, yeah. the district's going to start in a few weeks for a lot of these schools. And then after that, we have high school basketball. I was uh, just getting a message saying, oh, by the way, getting ready. Uh, they're saying we're <laughs> six weeks away from the start of the season. You better get your legs under you. I went and jogged three miles yesterday. Yeah. You lost some weight already, so you should be good. Uh, I'm about 10 pounds lighter than what I typically am whenever I do the games. Yeah, uh, I'd like to lose five or six more pounds going into the season. Uh, and then eat healthier. That's the problem, man. I would go and referee all these games, and I would just be so exhausted and so hungry, and then I would just wolf down food and just ruin it all. I'm not going to do that this year. Not going to do that this clean year. and mean, man. Uh, you can be part of the show. We're live right now on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. I noticed that we're on Twitter right now. Uh, are they giving us the, uh, the go-ahead to be on Twitter again? That was pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, you can be part of the show by going on to our YouTube stream and uh, leaving a comment or two. Joe, people were giving me crap yesterday because of a post that I had about you yesterday. Oh, I saw that, man. Okay, and did you think it was out of bounds? Because I posted that I was super excited to see you fired up within two seconds of the show defending the Dallas Cowboys when, in fact, you talked crap about them all off season, I all can summer tell, I long. I can talk crap about them. But, I'm a lifelong Cowboys fan. But two seconds into the show... You were like, we're back, baby. You no, were... I said Cowboys won. Puro pinche Cowboys. No, 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 no. You were pounding your chest for the Cowboys. No, I said, why you, were you pounding you your were, chest? You were starting to believe. No, I said, was. I said, why were you pounding your chest? Because you all uh, beat a crappy team. Dude, you guys beat a crappy team. Too. Carolina won two games you last know, year, You know man. what? You know what? Come the on, Texas beat a, beat a crappy Come team, on. too. You need to pull. You need to get all these Ws. Come you, need, you need to beat all these crappy teams we already in know order what's to make happen. the playoffs. We already know what's going to happen. Cowboys look great against these other teams that are lesser than, you know, as far as on, on the offensive end. Mm -hmm. They might be great on defense. But the thing is, when they play up, they play against a team with the winning record. Right. You already know what's about to happen, man. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. already know. Yeah, we, we do know. We do know. Typically, the Cowboys wet the bed when that happens, especially if they're on the road. But you never know. You never know. With that defense, if that defense becomes elite, there's a chance. There's always a chance when it comes to it. Again, my name is Mike Jimenez. That is Joe Garcia. Again, our YouTube stream is up and running right now. Uh, people not only dissing the fact that I went after you a little bit on Twitter, there is some talk about whether, whether or not the word nugget should be used ever again. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> nugget is part of this show. Okay? And whether you guys like it or not, you guys use it. You like that word. You want that word. So we're going to keep Nugget around, man. Nugget means attractive female is what it is. But let's get into last night's Monday Night Football game. You had the Niners taking on the Jets. Uh, the big announcement before the game was that Christian McCaffrey would not be playing, right? A last-second scratch, or was he? Niners won 32-19. to Okay, big, big part of the game over there. Brock Purdy was basically a game manager out there. 231 yards passing, no touchdowns, no interceptions. The game was all about a man named Jordan Mason who came out of nowhere, 28 carries, 147 yards, and a touchdown. Jordan Mason also had a reception for five yards. Came out of nowhere, right? This is a guy 
who is 25 years old out of Georgia Tech, third season in the NFL, no. backing up Christian McCaffrey. And when they said the stats that he had rushed for more, he hadn't rushed for this many yards since high school. He never did this in college at Georgia Tech, filling in for Christian McCaffrey and did a bang up job, man. It was like it was like Christian McCaffrey was still there, right? He's not as good as Christian McCaffrey, obviously, but you saw some talent there. The way that he was able to get through these holes. And by the way, Spencer Burford, formerly of UTSA, at left tackle, came into the game in the second half because of an injury on the offensive line. So we saw UTSA Roadrunner out there. But Jordan Mason going out there and just dominating time of possession, 147 yards rushing, got the touchdown. Debo Samuel also pitched in with a uh, a rushing touchdown as well. Saints, go, I mean, the uh, Niners go out there to win 32-19. to Your thoughts on Jordan Mason, Joe? And what he was able to do rushing the ball for that team. He did a great job. I mean, what more can you ask? You know? I think he did a, a great job. He looked good out there. Decent, serviceable. Mm-hmm. You know? Is that going to be RB? Their RB1? Uh, well, it, it, and until uh, until uh, Christian McCaffrey comes back. Now, Christian McCaffrey has, I believe they say, like a calf injury. Yeah, some type of calf injury. So... Until he comes back, I mean, I think you'd have to say, is this going to be your RB1 until McCaffrey is able to return? And the thing is, I thought he was, I didn't know that he was going to be missing an X amount of games. I thought he was going to be ready to go, Mm -hmm. you know, but to everybody's surprise, he was not. And I think they said they knew that he was going to be out since with Thursday or something. That was the problem is that he gave it away, man. And Jordan Mason, after the game, immediately after the game, was like, yeah, they told me I was going to be starting on Friday. And I was like, wait a minute. You're supposed to have an accurate injury report. And the Niners went out there saying that Christian McCaffrey was a game-time decision. You are not a game-time decision if you are being told, if someone is being told that you're going to be starting two or three days before. So there's going to be a fine that's going to come the Niners' way because that's, that's effectively cheating. And what a dumbass. Why would you say that? You, you, you should know better. You know, things like this probably happen all the time. But, I mean, for somebody to outright and come out and say, oh, I knew on Friday, you know, like. I mean, and that was an immature young player who's excited to be out there. Yeah. But, and, I, and I don't think he knows any better. That's the thing. You know, he's somebody who's probably on a practice squad, somebody who doesn't get a lot of touches. Goes out there, balls out on Monday night football, dude. The biggest, you know, there's no game going on. The whole country's watching this game. And he goes out there and has a fantastic performance. I don't think he knows any better other than to say, hey, man, I'm just glad to have this opportunity. But to go off and say, I knew on Friday. They told me I was starting on Friday. Throws the team under the bus. And I don't think he meant to do it on purpose. Not at all. Jake Moody, the uh, field goal kicker, was just lighting it up, man. Kicked from 51 kicked from 46 from 31 from 53 from 23 from 42 six field goals there for the Niners yesterday which means that they weren't getting into the end zone a lot Brandon Ayuk who sat out almost the entire offseason in a yeah. contract dispute wanted to trade ended up re-signing for 30 million dollars dropped a touchdown pass in the end zone that he probably should have caught nine times out of ten and it went through his arms. He did. I don't even think he even touched the ball. It like completely went through his arms. Yeah, man. I mean, I was watching the game while I was working. Oh, know, really? Because yeah. I work in the evenings, you know. Uh, so I I was catching it here and there. But I got to tell you, man. The 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 talk of this game has been one Aaron Rodgers, man. Right. And we're gonna get back to that. But I was watching this game, and I got to say, man, the 49ers... There was a dominant performance by them against the Jets. Even though the Jets are fabled to have, you know, one of uh, the better defenses in the NFL, the the Jets still could not stop the 49ers, man. It, it was bad on both ends for the Jets, unfortunately. Too many weapons for I mean, the Niners. I mean, it was bad. And by the way, think about it this way. You had six field goals. The, this could have been worse. This could have been a 40-point victory. 32-19 to 19 seems like, well, it was kind of close. No, it really wasn't. No. It, it really wasn't. There, it, there was one really good team out there and one really bad team out there. And when I saw the Niners go out and just kick field goal after field goal, I was thinking to myself, man, just get some of these into the end zone. Uh, Debo Samuel could have taken it to the end zone, got stopped at the two, ended up at a, as a field goal. Um, Juszczyk should have scored a touchdown on a long pass, ended up as a field goal. Uh, Brandon Ayuk dropping the pass in yeah. the end 
Uh, the Niners almost had a pick six that could have gone the other way. Niners could have blown this open up big time. I said before the at the end of the show yesterday that there are certain times when Las Vegas gives you a gift. <laughs> this was it. And this was the one. Niners were favored by just three and a half points. And I was thinking to myself, should I take my mortgage and pay it and, and bet it? Because three and a half points home against the Niners was it going to happen? Let's talk about Aaron Rodgers, man. Aaron Rodgers got pulled in the fourth quarter for Tyrod Taylor. I mean, you look at the game, right, as far as passing yards go. It wasn't that bad. When I'm looking at passing yards, for the Jets versus the 49ers, 198 passing yards for the Jets, 221 for the 49ers. But the disparity was rushing. The, the Jets, they didn't have a run game to speak of. Mm -hmm. It was bad. You know, and then you look out there. And you see what Aaron Rodgers was doing right out the gate. He looked like a guy that hadn't played in over a year. Aaron Rodgers looked old. He looked bad, dude. He was 13 for 21, 167 yards, did have a touchdown pass. Again, they pulled him in the fourth quarter for Tyrod Taylor. I'm going to go ahead and assume that they pulled him because they didn't want him to get hurt. We saw that last year. <laughs> Sixth play of the game. Was it was an Achilles injury or something yeah, like that? He's they, out for for the whole year. Are they going to do that Tim Duncan thing where they write it on the on the on the sheet? Yeah, D old DNP old. old. <laughs> uh, Aaron Rodgers is forty years old. He's going to turn forty one during the season. Damn. How old was Brady already when he was playing in his twilight? I think years? he was forty two at Damn. one point. Uh, but Brady never looked old. He looked good still, Brady. He, he did. Yeah. And Aaron Rodgers yesterday, there are certain plays that Aaron Rodgers would do to extend plays. Back in the day, yeah, he would he would roll out, use his legs. Again, he wasn't a running quarterback, but he was a quarterback who could run, and he was a quarterback who could squeak away for six, seven, eight yards, yeah. slide, extend get a first down, extend the play yeah. a little bit. He could not do any of that. And in fact, there were some plays where he would roll out and he looked like he wanted to. His legs just weren't there. They 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 weren't there. He was gimpy. Yeah, you know, he was. It was like he was limping forward as opposed to like running forward. And I don't know if any of that is just the effect of the injury from last season where you're just afraid of getting hurt again. Or if it's the fact that he hasn't fully recovered. Or if it's the fact that he's just simply old. But the fact of the matter is that Aaron Rodgers is not elite anymore. And I would say that Aaron Rodgers right now is probably the bottom half of the quarterbacks right now. There's 30 quarterbacks in the end, 32 quarterbacks in the NFL that start. I don't see him in the top 16. No, man. He just... He just looked, he looked washed. Yeah. He looked washed. Like his best years were behind him. I got to say, if you're looking at Aaron Rodgers and you're looking at Deshaun Watson, these two guys are mere shells of what they used to be. And Deshaun Watson shouldn't be that way, man. Deshaun Watson shouldn't is be. still in his 20s, for crying out loud. Shouldn't be, but he just looked so bad, man. It's like, we all have, you can have a bad game, right? But going back to last year, he just didn't look good either. You know, in the few games that he did play before injury. Deshaun Watson's 28 years old right now. He should be in his prime. He and when good. he played for the Houston Texans, he was a top six, top seven quarterback in the NFL. Some would say even top five or top three. Uh, but Deshaun Watson, the second that he got caught on the massage table and all those non-disclosure agreements that were, were passed out, and he was basically called out as being a cochino nationwide, right? Yeah, yeah. He changed, man. He changed. Uh, I saw this uh, uh, TikTok yesterday. It was a bunch of Cleveland Browns fans. Yeah. Talking about Baker Mayfield. <laughs> but they wish and, they had him they back. Was, they were saying, Baker, we were wrong. Come we're home, so, Baker. We're so sorry, Baker. Because Baker Mayfield is balling out for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He and Chris Evans hooked up for two touchdowns. Chris Godwin got a touchdown on Sunday as well. And Baker Mayfield looks like a legit quarterback in the NFL. No one's ever going to call Baker Mayfield legit. Like, not legit, but uh, elite. Yeah. If Baker Mayfield could put up numbers from here until tomorrow. But there's something about Baker Mayfield. Uh, I, maybe it's his height. He's 6'1". Uh, maybe it's the personality. Yeah, he's kind of a douche, you know. But, I mean. But he's, he's somebody who's loved by his, his teammates. Yeah. You know, but Baker Mayfield... Passed for 80% against the Commanders, 289 yards, four touchdowns, had 146.4 rating last year, uh, a rating on Sunday. I mean, last year, threw for 4,000 yards and 28 touchdowns. The guy is legit. He took the Browns to the playoffs 
But look at his career, 2018 to 2021 with the Browns. Then he goes to the Panthers. Then he goes to the Rams. Then he goes to the Bucks. This guy got passed around like a joint. He wasn't wanted. And now you're seeing that he's actually a very, very competent quarterback. Part of this could be simply that, that people thought he was immature. Because Baker Mayfield, when he came out of college at Oklahoma, was yeah. just somebody who was kind of cocky and brash. I don't know if people thought that he was like the second coming of Johnny Manziel. But Baker has talent. And when you put some good receivers around him in a decent running game, that Tampa Bay team might make some noise this year. There's always a team that comes up to the front, right? And everyone always says that there's, that there's a certain division that sucks, right? In the AFC, it's the AFC South. In the NFC, it's been the NFC South, right? The, you talk about the jokes that are, well, one of these teams is going to make the playoffs. Tampa Bay, Carolina, Atlanta, New Orleans, right? Yeah. New Orleans are good, man. That offensive line looked really good this past weekend. And I know you're saying, well, who did they play? I was looking at that Carolina team oh, and all, that de- all, all, the, all the defenders that they had on there. I don't see why they're not any good. That has to be one of the worst coach teams out there. Yeah, it's probably coaches or something else, but no need to church it up, man. They they were a two-win team. They're just a bad team. No, I get that, you but know? but I'm looking at the players that they have on their roster. Yeah. On the defensive side. On the offensive side of the ball, I mean, Chuba Hubbard, he's so Exactly. <laughs> when, when your number one receiver is Deontay Johnson, who's oh, he's all right. Adam Thielen, who was really good, I don't know, six, seven years ago with Minnesota back in the day. Offensively, they don't have anything going on. But defensively, when I was watching that game, I was like, hey, look, they got Jadavian Clowney. I know Jadavian Clowney. They have J.C. Horn, who's a, who's a lockdown uh, uh, defensive back. They have Xavier Woods. They have Jordan Fuller. You know, they have uh, Shaq Thompson. They have, a, they have good players on that defense. That defense shouldn't suck as bad as it does. So I know I'm trying to hype my team up because my team got a W. Yeah, they got the dub. NFL, the NFL power rankings came out today, and the Saints were ranked as the worst team with a win. And they're saying, well, look who they played. Well, I mean, look who the Texans played. Texans got by the Titans, the, the, uh, the Colts yeah. on the road, one by two. But the Colts and the, and the Texans, man, they always play – this game tight even going back to last season that was a game that they barely won you know it's like it was like two points or a field goal something like that do you want to visit espn cbs sports or usa today's top list uh, power rankings today Uh, let's go with usa today man usa today i had it up here earlier let me see usa today's power rankings um here it is the headline says cowboys soar America's team. So, number one, let's say fact or fiction, Kansas City Chiefs. They were saying basically the fact that they have Xavier Worthy, who had two touchdowns, including a touchdown on his first touch ever, right? He had a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, had a fantastic game for the Chiefs. They're saying, look, we have this guy on this team. There's not going to be any issues when it comes to does he have anybody to throw to. Yeah. Rasheed Rice looked pretty good. Uh, Chiefs at the number one spot, according to USA Today. I'll buy it. Okay. Number two, they have the the, uh, Detroit Lions. The Lions barely squeaked by. They beat the Rams, was it, 26-20 in overtime? I was not a fan of what the Lions were doing that game. They sucked the entire game and somehow pulled out a win. I guess you can say that it's a good thing when when a good team, you know a good team is when they win a bad game, right? That's the old saying, right? You are, you, you are a good team. If you somehow win a game that you shouldn't win, that's what the Lions did against the, uh, the, Rams. the Rams the other day. Uh, but I'm not going to buy the Lions at number two. Amon Ross St. Brown has 13 yards receiving. That guy's, that, imagine C.D. Lamb having 13 yards receiving. How would you feel offensively? That's what they did to Amon Ross St. Brown this past weekend. Niners at number three, I would flip them to number two. Yeah, I would put the Niners at number two. Uh, Lions... Would you put them at number three or would you put the Ravens? I would put the Ravens. I mean, the Ravens were literally one inch away from winning that game. A toe. A toe. <laughs> Back of the end zone, a toe. And what's funny about that is that after the game, you see Lamar Jackson and all them just whine and complain about it, saying, well, we thought it was a touchdown. Do we see the instant replay, man? His foot's out of bounds. Not a foot. His toe. toe. His big toe. Is out of bounds. Hey, maybe the toe wasn't out of bounds, but the shoe was. Maybe he curled the toe. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but the number four, but but the the Ravens being number four, okay, I buy it, right? Number yeah. five, they have the Eagles. The Eagles went into Brazil, go out and beat uh, the uh, the the uh, Green Bay Packers out there. Uh, Jalen Hurts, I mean, he looked all right. But Saquon Barkley went out there, had three touchdowns. Saquon Barkley ranked number five in the power rankings. They have USA Today has the Houston Texans moving up from number seven to number six because Joe Mixon had a career high. 30 touches, had over 150 yards rushing. Texans look solid. Now at number seven, here's the thing, Joe. It's like Notre Dame football. Notre Dame football gets overrated and gets overhyped right away. How do they have the Cowboys jumping up from 18 to seven? Preseason, USA Today says Cowboys ranked number 18, and now they're seven, right? Because it says they got they got Dak Prescott, his contract on the 11th hour. Mike Zimmer's defense looks good. 25 pressures on Cleveland. Are the Dallas Cowboys really the seventh best team in the NFL? Mm, I don't know, man. Right now, I guess they are, depend based on how they looked against the Browns. But the problem is, how are they going to look when they play a team with the winning record? Look what happened last year, right? Cowboys look great. And then what happens? They go up against the 49ers. And what happened there? They got decimated, Mm -hmm. you know, dominated by the 49ers. Then they go up against other teams with winning records, and it seems like they just can't get it done. Whether it be indoors or outdoors on a turf, it doesn't matter. They couldn't even get it done at home when they play against a team with the winning record. It doesn't matter. Well, I mean, the the Cowboys are in line right now to have a 2-0 record. Yeah. Okay? They should be the This is a bye week. You know what I'm going to do this week? (laughs) You know what I'm going to do this week? I'm going to bet money on the Cowboys. No, the, the Cowboys man. are going to win this game and cover the spread. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to be happy, right? Saints win, my team's 2-0. and Cowboys win, I win some money, right? Either way, it's going to happen, baby. Either way, it's going to happen. USA Today has ranked number 8, the Buffalo Bills, moving up from 13-8. to eight. Buffalo, I can buy that. Number 9, they have the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, really? The Colts? Really? Okay. Somebody's on something, man. They're smoking something funny. Yeah, that's a little bit weird. Number 10, they have the uh, L.A. Rams, despite the fact that Puka Nakua got a knee injury. They said the Rams look better than expected. They kept them at number 10. Uh, they dropped the Jets from 6 to 12. Uh, other teams in the mix, they dropped uh, the Bengals from 9 to 14 because Joe Burrow looked, looked really bad the other day. They dropped the Green Bay Packers from 3 to 16. They had them at 3. Jeez. And now because Jordan Love's not there, they dropped him all the way to 16. Jordan Love going to miss anywhere between 2 to 6 weeks with his injury, with an MCL injury. They moved up the Steelers from 21 to 17. They uh, moved down the Falcons because Kirk Cousins looked like trash. <laughs> dropped them from 12 to 19. They moved the Bears up from... from uh, well, actually, they have the Bears winning, winning, but dropping from 17 to 20 because... They only had 148 total yards, less than 100 yards passing by Caleb Williams. And my Saints, they moved them up from number 27 to number 24. But they also made mention of the fact that the Saints have won the first game of the season each season for the last six years. Yeah, this is true. So as far as the worst team in the league, the New York Giants and the Cowboys get to play them twice. They look horrible, man. The Giants team is going to be a lottery team, dude. (laughs) <laughs> they should go and draft Quinn another Ewers, quarterback. Quinn man. Ewers, baby. And that's the sad thing, right? We're all rooting for Quinn Ewers. You know, man, Heisman, he's a Heisman Trophy candidate. Leading the pack right now, mm-hmm. right? He gets drafted. And what's what's your consolation prize? You get to the NFL, get to the big show, you might be playing for the, for the Giants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do we still root for him? I mean... If you're a Cowboy fan, he's in your conference. That's true, man. That's true. Tony Niles reached out to us says that Joe Burrow's new color of hair is the curse. Oh, yeah. He dyed his hair blonde, yeah. man. And he cut it. Let's see what uh, Mario Cavazos has to say. He says, when the Cowboys smacked the Saints' ass, then beat the Ravens in Jerry World, everyone no. will be surprised. They ain't beating the, the Saints. They ain't talking stupid that, crap. As always, Super Bowl bound. No. They ain't beating the Ravens, man. I, I promise you. Tim Gonzalez says, Mike picked UTSA, and look what happened. Look what happened. The team that was favored to win won. Why are UTSA fans kind of, like, freaking out about it? I know that they that Texas State had never beaten UTSA. I get that. But who was the favorite team, Joe? Who did Vegas have winning? They had Texas State. They had Texas State Didn't winning. Didn't they have them by, like, three? Two, two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot more than that. 
<laughs> wow, what they throw? 49 points? 47 points? Somewhere around there? Yeah, my boy was going out there right now to uh, go to the practice that they're hosting. Let's see what Trailer's going to say to the media after this one, too. I was an ass kick. You know? I'm sure they're going to bring it up again. And UT is going to beat the living crap out of them this week. Let's give some love to our friends over at MCS General Contracting. Man, let's go ahead and do that, man. MCS General Contracting, more than 30 years of combined experience in concrete placement. They are the best in the business, honest pricing, high quality work. They get going on house foundations, driveways, concrete patio decks. If you want to extend the deck, extend the driveway. If you're a business and you need to put together a slab, a parking lot, or other concrete placement services or sidewalks, reach out to MCS General Contracting at 210-774-9155. They're confident in their skills, so give Chris Leha over at MCS General Contracting a call at 210-774-9155. And thank you for being a sponsor of this show. Now, I'm going to assume that life's getting better for MCS General Contracting because the weather is getting nicer, right? No longer 100-degree temperatures. We're calling this false fall number one, right? Yeah. Temperatures are getting up into the 90s this week, but it's a lot better than what it was back in August. I cannot wait for fall to officially be here. The false fall, man. You know, probably like in a week or two, it's going to be back in the 90s. Yeah. You know. I mean, it is today. Yeah. Just no more hundreds. I, I think we're done with 100 degree temperatures. No more hundreds. That's perfect fun. I went jogging yesterday. It was like 93 degrees outside. It felt great. It wasn't 103, 105. It just felt good out there, man. Yeah, Tony Ornelas is saying, did you get the video I sent you guys yesterday on Twitter? I was looking for it right now. I didn't really see anything from yeah, you, I Tony. I didn't see anything either. Resend. We'll check it out. Yeah. But speaking of video, let's go to my screen real fast. This was what was making news on Sunday. And uh, this is the dash cam, of the body cam footage of what happened during the Tyreek Hill incident. And Tyreek Hill pulled over for speeding and reckless driving before the game in Miami. Tyreek Hill, you, you see the officer come up to him and ask for him to identify himself, whatever the case may be. Tyreek Hill initially lowered the window and then rolled it back up. And as you can see, the tent job is really, really, really dark. Probably illegal dark. Robert Griffin III posted this this body cam saying that it was over aggression and that the police should be appalled of themselves and whatnot. And I am sympathetic towards it because I believe that a lot of police target African Americans and Latinos, people of color. Yeah, but why is this guy acting like a dumbass, man? They're telling you to get out your car and you're rolling up your window. You're, you're not up. wanting to go ahead and cooperate. So they pull you out. He didn't roll. He rolled up his window. You can't see through the window. You don't know what he has inside the car. Right. I am somebody who gives crap to police all the time as far as saying when they're doing something wrong. The whole George Floyd incident, which was illegal. That was murder. I mean, right? you could have put the cuffs on the dude right away and then just kind of detain him, man. But I this mean, whole incident right here, it's Tyree Kill's fault. It is Tyree Kill's fault. Were they more? Were they too aggressive with them? Yes. They didn't need to do all that. You know, they could have handcuffed him. Sat him on the side. You know, just don't keep him there on the ground like that. Though, right. Man. But Tyree killed to come out afterwards saying that he was compliant the entire time. That no, he, didn't say he was not. Dude. He was running his mouth the entire time. The entire three and a half minute long video. He's talking in a high pitched voice about this that, and the other. But, and then they pull him off to the side. And he's like, oh, I had knee surgery and all this stuff. And he wouldn't stop talking. Yeah, but he you didn't know, shut up. He was just talking and talking and talking and talking. Just shut up. People are going to do this kind of stuff. They're going to engage in this type of behavior. That's, I have a lot of friends of mine who are cops, family that are cops, and they deal with this. You're you know, dealing with a lot of different personalities when you're out there dealing with people. You know? right. And when you're pulling people over, some are going to give you attitude, be in a mood, because they're already upset because they're getting pulled over. They're not going to cooperate. You, know, you, know, you have to deal with a lot of different factors out there all the time. So, I mean... The police, I mean, do you want to go and get shot? Because you didn't right. want to, you know, let's say you double guessed or you're, hey, I don't know what he has. I don't know what they're reaching for. Your life's on the line anytime you pull over somebody. So I understand from both sides, like where they're coming from. But I mean, people are going to do this kind of stuff. They're going to engage in these type of behavior because they are people. Yeah. You know, it's it's how you react to the situation. Yeah. And, and Tyreek Hill screaming at the officer, don't touch my windows. Don't touch my windows. 
What, what are you doing knocking on my windows? I didn't tell you you can knock my, on my windows. Just shut the fuck up. Sorry, dollar. <laughs> Just shut up, dude. And let, let, let's, talk, let's talk about Tyreek Hill as a person. Tyreek Hill is somebody who broke a woman's leg. He's also somebody accused of domestic assault. He's also accused of child abuse. Okay? This is not a good guy. He's a very good football player. He's yeah. one of the fastest players in all of football. But what the officers did here was not wrong. Not wrong in one bit. And I will be the first to defend somebody when they get abused by police, when police go off and, and they over they overstep their bounds and all that stuff. And when you see play, when I, it was almost like ESPN. Robert, you know, for, Robert Griffin III, formerly of ESPN. When you see like the Ian Rappaports and Adam Schefter's and all them say that, yeah. all, all in, in unison say, this should never have happened. This was too much force. This was bad. The police officers did something wrong. No. The window is rolled down. He rolls it back up. What are you doing when you're doing that? And when the officer is saying, roll it back down, and you can't even see through the window, and Tyreek Hill is there going, don't touch my car. Don't touch my windows. I didn't say you could knock on my door. And then he rolls it down just a little bit. Screw you, Tyreek Hill. Uh, Them saying, you know what? Get your ass out of here, and we're going to figure out what's what. I have absolutely no problem with. Yeah, I'm just telling you, too, with the windows as dark as they are, you don't know what he's reaching for. You don't know what he has in the car. This is not racist, man. This is not racist. This is a jackass. This is also a guy with a criminal history, dude. And I know they didn't know that at the time, but he's acting like it. Drew Show reaches out to us on our YouTube stream. Says Tyreek acted like a guy who punched his pregnant girlfriend in the stomach and broke her three-year-old son's arm by beating him with a belt. That is what this guy did. I have no sympathy, sympathy for this guy. What a jackass. No sympathy for Tyreek Hill. This is the kind of guy who's either going to get have himself killed or kill somebody else. That's who he is. Yeah, and they were saying that he was driving like 100 miles an hour. Now, that hasn't been proven yet. I was That's look- what they're saying. I was looking yeah. for that. Uh, that would also make things a little bit more escalated at the time uh, because this is get- going towards the uh, the football stadium. Yeah. There was a teammate, uh, I think uh, Kalei Campbell, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was also uh, put in handcuffs at this time. I think he pulled over and was like, hey, man, that's Tyreek. That's Tyreek. You know what? Who gives a crap if it's Tyreek Hill? Who gives a crap? We saw the other day in San Antonio, Jeremy Sohan crash on I-10 and 1604. Yeah. I believe that because we're all from San Antonio Spurs fans, we let that pass. He crashed with a Ferrari. It was a Porsche. Porsche. He crashed a Porsche, right? Because he, quote-unquote, lost control. Why did everybody give Jeremy Sohan a pass? Why? He's a spur. Because he's a spur. You know what he probably did? He was probably driving 100 miles an hour down that, yeah. down that curve. He was going in and out, probably weaving in and out of traffic. Lost control because he was going too fast, you know, and rest is history, man. And you know what? We're not going to give a crap until they hit somebody, right? But this kind of behavior with Spurs players has been going on for quite some time. Mm-hmm. You know, they just keep everything hush hush. Right. I tell you some stories, man, but I don't want to get people in trouble. Sam Salinas comes out to us on our YouTube stream, says one word cooperates. I had an encounter with police in my 20s. It was a case of mistaken identity. I cooperated and uh, got an apology. Now, I mean, you know, I've had some good interactions with cops. I've had some bad ones in, in my lifetime. Uh, I had a cop come up to me one time, pull me over, and say that he wanted to search my car. And I stood there on the side of the road saying no, 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 no for over an hour until he left. And I remember telling the guy, you're messing with the wrong one because I'm an educated guy. I know my rights. And I know. Do you know why he, he said he wanted to search my car? His probable cause was that I had a, I had a softball bat in my back seat. That's probable cause. I said, that's, you know what that says? That I play softball, right? That was way back in the day. Uh, but uh, Tyreek Hill, we don't know any charges. We do know that one of the officers is um, currently under suspension right now while it's being investigated. I'm sure he's getting paid through it all, but I don't think they did anything wrong. And in fact, I believe the police department has said as such that they're defending their guys. Tyreek Hill being a jackass, rolling the window back up. Oh, man, Jesse, eh? He says, I, was, I swear I was behind Jeremy on I-10 that day. Recognize that ugly car, laugh a lot. Didn't see him speeding. And Swiss says, Sohan also doesn't have seven baby mamas. <laughs> Robert Griffin III with his 
caption here says, here's the body cam footage of Tyreek Hill's detainment before the Dolphins game. This level of aggression and demeaning behavior was not necessary. This is an ex- excessive abuse of power, overuse of power. And everyone just chimed in with like, what the hell are you talking about? Take the L is what someone posted. Take the L. Dude, I get it, man. There are a lot of crappy cops out there. There are a bunch of C students from high school with a gun. I get it, right? They're not there to protect and serve most half the time. I get it. This was not the case. Yeah, they said the cop's not suspended. He's on desk duty. Yeah. Swiss is coming out saying, Mike, I have my rights. He been as. That's right. I know them, too. <laughs> yeah. He's not. Midtown, suspended. Texas saying, do you want to see my degree or my W-2, Mike, when he gets pulled over? <laughs> Um, a, I'm the one who probably has a degree, and B, my W two is probably bigger than theirs. Uh, <laughs> than a city employee with all that overtime. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> I said it. Fascinating, man. Fascinating. Uh, man, I, I lost track of time over here, man. <laughs> this Tyreek Hill thing got me going, man. Hey, we also, uh, Tony Ornella says he sent you something. I think it might have been DM on Twitter or the X, should I say? Let me see here. Send me a post saying, um, did this really happen? When you win an unexpected game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, apparently, like, two coaches kissed during the, uh, Notre Dame game against, uh, Northern Illinois, somehow licks, uh, lips locked somehow. Yeah. I have no idea what it is about what, but it doesn't mean anything to me. If they're straight or gay, I don't care. No. I don't care. But they, they I, I did see that. I, I forgot about that. I just didn't understand the, 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 the context. The context. I mean, we saw Magic Johnson kiss uh, freaking uh, Isaiah Thomas back in the day before a game. <laughs> Remember that? They said it was so weird, dude. That was something they used to do. When they were playing against each other in the playoffs or something, or yeah. a game, they would go and hug, and he would give him a kiss on the cheek. I'm like, yeah. what are you doing, man? I mean, don't Italians do that? Don't they grab you by the face yeah, and kiss like left on left and right? each cheek, man. But I'm right. just like, what are you all doing, man? It didn't look like one of these people wanted to get kissed. That was the thing. I don't know what the hell was going on with that video, so I don't know how to like analyze it other than that. <laughs> Tony says, I thought it was funny, though. Sorry. Uh, I just don't know how to analyze it. I, I didn't know how to, the backdrop behind it all. Uh, but Tony, when I see you, baby... Giving you a kiss, baby. That's what oh, I thought that's going to happen. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's take a look here. The uh, week two of the NFL uh, season is going to come on again. The Cowboys play the Saints. You know, I didn't realize that the uh, Texans play a Sunday night game. Yeah. So I'm excited about that, man. Uh, I was I was thinking about going to the game in Houston on Sunday because I'm working there this week, and uh, but a Sunday night game. Yeah. That's going to be tough, man. That's and a tough drive back home. Friend of the show here, avid listener, Tony uh, Tim Gonzalez says, Mike and Joe, breaking news. I tagged you all on Twitter, and he's putting on here some big ACC Q quarterback news. SMU coach Rhett Lashley, Lashley, Lashley should I say, mm-hmm. has named Kevin Jennings the starting QB. He replaces Preston Stones. You know, SMU is uh, one of those under-the-radar teams right now. Yeah. You know? They're one of those teams that, you know, the ponies could could make a run towards the playoffs, man. You know, somebody from that group of five is going to make it. Saints Cowboys, twelve o'clock game. The uh, Thursday game is going to be the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins in Miami on Amazon Prime. So we have to go from the the cock to oh, the prime. God, Mike, I got you saying that now. <laughs> <laughs> Bucks play the Lions in Detroit. The Colts play the Packers on the road. So one of those teams is going to come out with a victory. Jets and Titans. Again, battle of two teams that are 0-1. Vikings are hosting the Niners. Uh, Niners here by six points. The Patriots who came off a big victory hosting the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks are favored on the road to go 2-0. Jason Garcia will be happy when that happens. Giants and Commanders. One of those teams has got to win, right? <laughs> oh, look at this. You know the Giants suck so bad. And I know and Jaden uh, Daniels did, did okay from LSU, did okay as a, as, a, as a rookie starting quarterback for the Commanders. Commanders here by two. Do I bet my mortgage on the Commanders? I would, man. Those Giants ain't going to win nothing. I'll be luck. You know what the luck, the luck with the Giants is? Maybe they win two games, three games this season. Right. That's about it. But, I mean, 
How long do you think old boy's going to have his starting job at the quarterback position? Exactly. Dale Jones is trash. Chargers at Panthers. These are the 12 o'clock games. Browns at Jaguars. Raiders at the Ravens. Ravens got to get this victory. Raider, uh, Ravens here by nine and a half. Uh, the Rams are going into Arizona. Arizona had a pretty decent performance on Sunday, but they lost uh, Arizona fair by a point and a half. Steelers are going to the Broncos. So uh, Russell Wilson going back to his <laughs> to his former <laughs> former stomping grounds. Did you see him, though? He didn't even play in that game. Yeah. And he was out there in full garb, you know? Bengals at Chiefs. Bears at Texans. Texans here by six and a half. I will lay that six and a half all day, every day, dude. That Texans defense going up against Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams had 93 yards passing his first game. The Bears got got a win because of defense and special teams, but they don't have a defense to stop the Texans. Texas is going to roll in that game. That Bears team's a fraud, man. They're going to be a bad team again this season. The, the uh, Monday night game is the Battle of the Birds. You've got the uh, Falcons and Eagles going at each other. Give me the Eagles all day, every day, man. God, Kirk Cousins looks like trash, man. I'm not believing in Primo. I call him Primo. Cousins. <laughs> no, man. He ain't it. Oh, man. Let's give some love to Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs and Ken's 5, your, your source for daily Spurs content. Locked on Spurs is your daily Spurs podcast hosted by Jeff Garcia, the lead Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Jeff has a healthy plethora of guests all the time on the Locked on Spurs podcast. You can also follow Jeff on threads at Jeff G Ken's 5 SA. You can also follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. So make sure you go ahead and give Jeff a follow not only on threads and Twitter, but also on YouTube at YouTube.com forward slash at locked on spurs this is where you're going to be able to find the replay of the locked on spurs podcast make sure to like subscribe and share you know jeff garcia typically is on our podcast on wednesdays during the season so that's what we're going to hope to have again this upcoming spurs season as Wemby takes the floor for his second season Wemby, the favorite to become what was it the most improved player most improved player defensive player and of the year. defensive player of the year now, on uh, Kens5.com, Jeff Garcia has an article uh, about how Greg Popovich wrote the foreword for expert DeMar DeRozan's new book. That's pretty cool. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, who, by the way, his name was, was in that Kendrick Lamar song earlier this year, uh, Not Like Us. Yeah. And DeRozan was on the, on the uh, stage with him at the crypto. Yep. That was pretty badass. Uh, but you can go to kens5.com to check it out. And again, right now, they're in the off season. Jeff is not doing daily podcasts as at, the, at the moment. Doing it about three times a week or so. But as the season gets closer and closer, we're going to have that daily content for you. Locked on Spurs now with 5,000 plus subscribers. We have a super chat coming in. Five bucks from the Drew Show. Thank you so much. It says, let's do all the NFC East team money line parlays. Uh, it pays over two to one. Throw in Baltimore, and it's three to one. Who says? Who says, boys? What do you say, boys? Okay, what do you say, boys? Okay, let's do all the NFC, NFC East team money line parlays. Pays over two to one. Throw in Baltimore, and it's over three to one. Okay, so you're basically saying that you're going to go for the um, so the NFC East money line parlay. So that would be the Commanders over the Giants. That'd be the Cowboys over the the Cowboys over the, uh, the Saints. Saints, yep. Yeah. And who's the other team? That that would be uh, the Eagles. Oh, Eagles uh, over the Falcons. Yeah. Hey, man, if you're getting two to one on those money lines combined, that's not a bad pick. Yeah, you'd probably make some scratch on that. Two dude. to one at Baltimore, make it three to one. Drew Show, I think you're on to something with that one, baby. I think you're on with something. That that's mm-hmm. a, that that's not a bad pickup right there. You know, I was going to show this too because we're talking about Jeff Garcia. He showed he shared this with me via on the X, and basically it's saying that overseas. The basketball team, Fenerbahce, is opting to sign ex-Spur Ken Birch and release former Spur Luka Simonic to give, to give Birch Simonic's roster spot. So they're cutting former, former Spur Luka Simonic to make way for another former Spur right. in Ken Birch. Because yeah. Luka Simonic has traveled well all over the, let's say, the NBA, going for, you know, playing in G League little stints here and there. But he, this never seems to get it together, man. He's a G League legend. I mean, and Lucas Simonic, I'm sorry, is the worst Spur first round draft pick he's washed, of the dude. last decade. And the fact that he was mocked to be in the second round, and the Spurs got him at what 17. The Spurs lucked out by getting Keldon Johnson in that draft. 
Luka Samanic is just not a very good player. He no. just really isn't. It, it's one of those things where it's it, it's between the ears. He has the talent. He has the height. 6'10". You look at him. He looks like a player, man. He looks like a good player. But there's just something wrong. He drafted 19th overall, by the way, by the Spurs. The, the Spurs, the Spurs it, just grabbed him for no apparent reason. His heart's not in it, man. I think they saw that, hey, maybe he's a raw talent. We can develop the kid. Just never panned out. You know what the telltale sign was where, where Coach Pop had enough? Was that one play where he just gave up? He gave up on defense. On that gave play. up on defense, and Coach Pop was like, You're done. You're done. They man. got rid of him like yeah. immediately. But that's a failure of Pop in the front office. Yeah. Brian Wright. Now they're saying that, you know, Brian Wright wasn't the guy who drafted him necessarily, but Brian Wright was in the room. And they all decided that this was the guy that they were going to go for. Kelvin Johnson was the player that everyone thought the Spurs were going to get at 19. They got Samanich instead. Keldon was still there at 29. What would Pledger call him? Samich. Samich. Lucas, <laughs> Lucas Samich. Let's do some entertainment news. Do we have the entertainment bump today? Yeah, man, we got the entertainment bump today. But there's going to be some sad news today, man. But well, let's, let's, well, let's go with some good news first and then go to the sad news. All right, we'll do that. Okay, so the uh, good news is is that P. Diddy just got slapped with a $100 million default judgment. Couldn't have happened to a better person. This is according to TMZ. This came down late this morning. Uh, Diddy's lawyer calls uh, the accuser a sexual predator. Okay, anyway, so, so uh, basically there was a man who claimed that uh, Diddy drugged and sexually assaulted him in a party back in 1997. Right? This happened allegedly 17 years ago and uh diddy just basically didn't show up to these court meetings and just like disregarded it all and the judge slapped a 100 million dollar judgment on this jeez man so this is the, i'm just reading what tmz says is diddy took a huge l in a sexual assault lawsuit he blew off because the judge slapped him with a hundred million dollar default judgment there's an inmate in a jail named Derek Smith, who claimed in a lawsuit that Diddy drugged him and sexually assaulted him back in Detroit in 1997. According to the lawsuit, the two were drinking and smoking weed at a party, got naked with a bunch of women, and uh, says that uh, Diddy felt him up. Jeez, man. Diddy's a during, cochino. During group sex. Now let me ask this the question, man. If it happened during group sex, I don't know, man. You know, there's a crossing of swords they're sometimes. Doing, they're doing some cochinos, dude. <laughs> so, uh, good times, I guess. But, you know, Diddy has been accused of sexual assault and by other people, uh, manipulating people and uh, forcing people to have sex and things like that. So, Diddy's a jackass of, of jackasses. And they're saying that basically Diddy broke. Oh, no. This guy has money upon money, dude. He's, he's I am broke. There's money to have to be had on, on that guy. <laughs> Tony Ranales. Whatever I hear about Diddy, I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have to talk about James Earl Jones. The passing oh, of the legend James Earl Jones. Man. Um, if you talk about James Earl Jones, who passed away at the age of 93. 93. Had a long, long life. James Earl Jones is somebody who is a, um, an icon. James Earl Jones is also somebody who's been old my entire life. Jeez. I swear, when Morgan Freeman dies, I'm gonna lose my I'm gonna lose my crap, right? Yeah. So according to um, CNN, Jones died at his home in New York on uh, yesterday at the age of 93. Uh, CNN talking about him as well. <coughs> ah, sorry about Bless that. you. Because for those of you who don't know, James Earl Jones was the voice of CNN. This is CNN. That was James Earl Jones. Yeah, he had such a great voice, man. That deep baritone. He also did the top 10 one time for, uh, uh, what's his name? David Letterman. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty funny, dude. Now, the Empire State Building, see if we can find a, a photos of this. Empire State Building uh, was lit up in honor of James Earl Jones yesterday. Oh, I saw that. So, oh, there it is. There it is. Check, check, check this out. This is on Instagram. They lit it up as a 
tribute to Darth Vader last night. That's badass. Yeah, man. He was the voice of Darth Vader back in the day. He's the one that kind of, his voice brought the character to life, made Vader one of the best on-screen villains of all time, mm -hmm. you know? And not only that, but, I mean, you can't forget him from coming to America. Oh, yeah, King Joffy Joffer. <laughs> you know, uh, I like Amos, uh, Amos's line in there. You know, you talk with, you say one bad thing about my daughter again, I'm going to stick my, my boot up your royal ass. <laughs> great line. <laughs> my son works? Uh, is, is, is a great line. Um, James Earl Jones, known not only for Star Wars as Darth Vader, coming to America, King Joffy Joffer, the Lion King as Mufasa, yeah. the old man in the Sandlot, Field of Dreams, where he traveled with Kevin Costner's character and was the one ultimately who goes into the, uh, into the afterlife, into the cornfield with the players. Um, just an icon. Yeah. Born in 1931 in Arcabulta, Mississippi. James Earl Jones. What is your favorite character, man? I'd probably say that I liked him as Vader and, of course, Mufasa. But King Joffrey Joffrey Joffer mm -hmm. was another one that was my favorite. Do you know that he was in the United States Army? He was an Army veteran? No, I didn't know that. Fought in the Korean War. Wow. Very cool. He, they, he made his Broadway debut in 1957. He played a lot of Shakespeare in the park with Othello Hamlet. They liked him because of his dark, his deep voice, right? Yeah. He won a Tony Award. He was also an EGOT guy. I don't know if you know what an EGOT is. It's somebody who has an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Jeez, one of the man. few to have that. Only had one child, though. Was married twice, once for four years. And then the second time he was married until his wife died. Back in 2016, they were together for 34 years. Uh, James Earl Jones made his film debut in Dr. Strangelove. Look at that. He made his debut in an iconic movie, a Stanley Kubrick movie back in 1964. Got a Golden Globe nomination for a movie called Claudine in 1974, then became Darth Vader. He was in Conan the Barbarian, The Hunt for Red October, Sneakers, Picket Fences. He was in Roots. Dude, the guy was in everything, man. James Earl Jones, an icon. Now, did you ever see that one time he got a, he got uh, disrespected and it was on accident? No. James Earl Jones, this is a, I'm, I'm going to look it up right now. James Earl Jones uh, was given a, um, a an award for something back in the day. Let me see. It was a plaque. Okay, it was in 2002. It was a Martin Luther King Day celebration. And they were thanking James Earl Jones, and when they gave him the plaque, it said James Earl Ray. So you may ask the question, well, who is James Earl Ray? James Earl Ray is the guy who killed Martin Luther King Jr. Jeez. And they're like, it's just a big mix-up, dude. Look at this text mix, Frank. He says, Arnold Schwarzenegger chopped the late James Earl Jones head off in the movie, in Conan the movie. I remember that. Yeah. I forgot that he was in Conan until Tex mex Frank had put that reference in there. Just the uh, uh, A coming down saying that Disney's going to keep his uh, voice alive forever using AI and his voice recordings. It, it's an iconic voice, you know, yeah. and, and, and I think the next one that uh, we're going to probably mourn at some point is going to be Morgan Freeman. They, they're, they're very similar to each other in the sense that they have that deep voice, an iconic voice. Uh, they're very subtle with their acting. Uh, they could lend themselves to all sorts of different things. I, when I close my eyes, I, I, I'm not a Star Wars guy. Yeah. I, mean, I, I watched Star Wars for the first time when I was like 28 or 30. Not a fan. Uh, it's not that I wasn't a fan. It's just I just didn't watch it growing up. Yeah. But I, when I picture James Earl Jones, I picture him as the dude from, from Field of Dreams. And I picture him as, the, as King Joffy Joffer and Coming to America. I know those weren't his two best roles. I know that Darth Vader is the iconic one. I know that Mufasa is a big one, but Mufasa is a voice, dude. It's not, yeah. you know, you don't see his face. Uh, but either way, there's nobody who can go out there and say that he was not just a legend. An absolute legend. Those who paid tribute to him yesterday include Kevin Costner, Mark Hamill, Alec Baldwin, Danny DeVito, Viola Davis, Octavia Spencer, Jamie Foxx, uh, Daniel Brooks, Kerry Washington, Rosario Dawson. Uh, LeVar Burton, uh, William Shatner, 
and George Lucas all uh, paid tribute to him yesterday. Uh, Alec Baldwin called Jones the, one of the greatest actors in American history. Dead at the age of 93. Yeah, he's had a long career, man. You know, um, I, was, I was watching some, let's, let's make things a little bit lighter, right? I was watching a TikTok yesterday about the show in living color and i use the, the word iconic a lot but this is an iconic show in living color and it was talking about the greatness about how everybody on that became a star we talked about how earlier this week last week the 40 year old virgin which came out in 2004 20 yeah. years ago how everybody became a star right steve carell went on to the office right mindy kaling went on to the office also went on to become the mindy show and the producer that she is you know, uh, a 40-year-old uh, virgin also had Paul Rudd, also had a, a lot of characters on there. Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, all became famous. And they were talking about how In Living Color became that not only in front of the camera, but behind the camera. Because Keenan Ivory Wayans and Damon Wayans, they discovered Jim Carrey. And Jim Carrey became one of the biggest actors in the mid-90s, was the biggest actor, was the first $20 million guy. Yeah. Right? Going on, David Allen Greer had a huge career. Did Tommy Davidson had a huge career. Sean Wayans, an amazing career as well. Marlon Wayans, Jamie Foxx, Jennifer Lopez, Kim Coles, Steve Park, Chris Rock. I mean, so many different people um, were, were on this show. And it has got me thinking, I need to go back in time and watch this. I need to stream this. <laughs> I've watched some episodes of Living Color like recently. Yeah. And they're still funny, man. Really? You know, Homie the Clown. Homie, Homie don't, don't play, play that. that. <laughs> I like what he's talking to the kids. He goes, see, what do you want me to do? You want me to go ahead and, uh, what do you say? Get that pie in the face so I can slip and break my neck? Yeah. Homie, don't play that. And he hits the kid on the head. <laughs> so, was was talking about how Jim Carrey's oh, God. iconic characters. Vera DeMilo, dude. Oh, my God. That's something you can't do nowadays, man. What was the what was the uh, what was the, the what was the firehouse guy? Was the, was the firehouse, firehouse Bob. Bob. Firehouse Bob. <laughs> So they were talking about when they discovered him. It was a show that was primarily for African American viewers, right? Yeah. But how Jim Carrey goes in auditions, and they they just said we got to have him somewhere in here. He needs to have a presence in here because he can contort his face and he can fit in with what we're doing. And then you see J Lo, Rosie Perez was in charge of the dancing back there so many yeah. great talents on that show look at tornier analysis he's correcting us that was true though it was fire marshal bill fire marshal bill there you go yeah but that vera de milo one was funny dude he would take the steroids you remember jim carrey yeah he had the bottle and he was acting like he was taking the steroids just inhaling them you know downing them like candy and then that laugh he would do like a horse yeah. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, God, bro. Dude, I need to find this on stream. Men someone, on someone, film. someone tell me where this is streaming. You can probably find it on YouTube, YouTube. Man, man. But uh, Men on Film is another one that was pretty damn funny, dude. And then Jamie Foxx. What was that one? Uh, he used to do that skit with that one girl. What was her name? Uh -huh. Wanda. The one, I got you. I got you. And, and I remember the first time they, they put her out there, they were kind of doing like um, a dating game, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So <laughs> they have her back there. And this is the first time that they see Jamie Foxx in this getup, right? And he comes over <laughs> the other side, right? They can see the date. And Jim Carrey and, and the other guy that, uh, I forgot who it was, one of the Wayne brothers, I think. They were just cracking up laughing. They couldn't contain it, dude. Yeah. When they saw him, it was over, dude. They, just, they were just laughing their asses off. They couldn't stop. <laughs> dude, th there's something about early 90s pop culture that just lives on, man. You know, you, you see the early 90s in Living Color. Uh, Living Single was really good back then. Even even back the old school um, Saturday Night Live back then when you had Chris Farley and Adam Sandler. There was good times back there, man. And, they, yeah. this, and for those who are still alive or still around now, the fact that Jamie Foxx, who became this, you know, mu music star, who became a, an acting star, a superstar, was part of that is amazing. Uh, I'm on MySA.com right now. Can you tell me why this is the the lead story? God. That Fluffy was spotted at a restaurant in New Braunfels. I mean, do we really care that... Uh, is it a slow news day? <laughs> that Gabriel Iglesias was at Herbert's in Old Town, Germany. 
last I week on on you. on September fourth. Now he did he did have he man. did have a home for many years in San Antonio. I believe it was by the airport. Yeah, I just never thought the dude was funny, man. Man, I've got tickets to two shows. I I, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. I have tickets on the same day for Fluffy in Austin and uh, and uh, Jeff Curry here at the Tobin Center in San Antonio. It's on the same day. I think it's October 11th. I got to figure out which ones I'm going to keep and which ones I'm going to get rid of. But uh, I'll probably sell the fluffy ones. They'll probably get me more money for those, right? For the fluffy ones? I don't even think anybody still goes and sees them, dude. Dude, no. We're talking fluffy tickets are like 200 bucks, dude. Why? Because he's popular, dude, man. He's not even funny, man. I mean, dude. He packs the house. He's overrated, bro. I mean, to each his own, but I just don't think the brother's funny, man. Just like, uh, what's his name? Kevin Hart? Mm -hmm. I don't think he's funny, dude. I just think he's annoying as hell. So how was this? Another comedian, Whitney Cummings, who I got to meet the other day. Yeah. I didn't say I got to meet. I got a, I got a selfie with her a couple of, a couple of months ago. It was me uh, going out with, uh, with Val and, and uh, with Angel and... Uh, a lot of their friends got to meet got to meet her apparently whitney cummings was spotted at a bucky's if you were to see her at a bucky's would you go up and say hi probably not she's been talking about moving from la to california she was at the bucky's uh uh the one in bastrop not bad imagine seeing a celebrity remember during covid when everyone was kind of just doing like camping and stuff like that because they, they couldn't go to amusement parks and they couldn't go to places like that. Yeah. And that Prada, that fake Prada store in, in West Texas, you had Rihanna going and be, Rihanna and Beyonce went there on the same week. Imagine just being in the middle of nowhere. Was it Marfa, Texas, wherever it is? There ain't nothing out have there. Another, and then you just look and Rihanna's there. And then you just look and then Beyonce's there. Kind of crazy. I bet you one thing is, is certain. Once they went there, they said, we ain't never coming back here. <laughs> it's like apocalyptic. Have you ever been out in West Texas? There's nothing out there, dude. Tumbleweeds. It looks like it's just a, a place stuck in time, dude. Drew Show coming out saying Herbert's a solid. Fat man, know their food. Says, I guarantee you he didn't go to Herbert's and order a burger like he meant it. First of all, Joe, <laughs> first of all, I was telling my girlfriend the other day that Mexican pancakes taste different and Mexican cheeseburgers taste different. It's because of what it's made on. It has the spices like from that everything grease. else. Because of that grease on the grill, man. <laughs> you know, they toast the buns, too, on that grease and everything. You go to... Who's the one that ordered a freaking burger the last time when we went to Laguna Madre? Was it you? Um, Laguna Madre? Yeah, I, I had a burger there. Yeah, I think Sean was giving you shit for it, too. Yeah. He was like, really, bro? Because Sean had went and Mario Cavazos went with us. We went to Laguna Madre, and I think it was you that was, ordered the burger. You, I had the burger, yeah. Yeah, you didn't get no. You're fish making fun because I didn't like the key lime pie. Yeah, you didn't like the key lime pie. It was. I good. tasted. I didn't like it. It's good. You just don't like key lime pie. I just don't. Yeah, it's all right. So, man, uh, it's it's going to be a, a busy day here in San Antonio. We have a lot going on. Uh, I'm looking forward to this week. UTSA football going into UT. Spread was like 34 last I saw, man. I, I'd say it's going to be 44. It's going to be a bloodbath. Not looking forward to that. Jeez, man, that that game's going to be bad. It's going to, you know, wheels will fall off, I think, early on in the first quarter, dude. Mm -hmm. It'll be it. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, UT goes up like 21 to 3 or something, you know? Yeah, uh, it's going to be over really fast, dude. Qu uh, yours should go off for at least five touchdowns. By the way, I've seen an article right now. Uh, former NFL star Adrian Peterson Ordered by a Houston judge to turn over his assets. This dude's going to be broke. How does this dude not he, have money, man? Because he owes an estimated $12 million. How do you not have money, dude? Dude, it, they, they don't know. How to, a lot of these players just don't know how to handle money. They take care of too many people. They get too many girlfriends. They get too many women pregnant. It's just bad. Like, you don't need five homes and all these cars. Right. You don't. Exactly. You just need one house. You need like maybe two cars, dude. It, it, it. It's all about the peer pressure within within the game, dude. I'd be like they, they one up each other with with jewelry. They one up each I'd other with damn. cars, dude. Dude, you, do you know who's not like that? And, and 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 you would think is like a moron, but is actually financially savvy. Is Rob Gronkowski? Really? He is somebody who has saved so much money. 
Uh, I went to a seminar one time, and he and his family were there, uh, and they were doing like a presentation. Dude, he he is really good. It was it was more his family speaking. Yeah. Uh, but they they saved so much money, which is amazing. Real fast, if you can show my number, I'm getting uh, reeled back into the office, man. So I gotta let everybody go. Uh, if you have questions about things like investments or insurances, my number is two one zero five zero eight zero three six nine. 210-508-0369. This is the time of the year where we get those open enrollment stuff for your insurances and things like that. Give me a call if you have questions about life insurance, disability insurance, or if you have questions about investing, old retirement accounts. If you have an existing IRA, an existing 401k or 403b or something like that, and you need help with it, give me a call. 210-508-0369. My phone keeps going off because work is calling. I know, Joe, I know you need to get back to work as well. Uh, But uh, everyone have a fantastic day, and we will be back tomorrow. See you all tomorrow. Laters.